happy with all these things. Probably start. Um, yeah. Now um, this one. Okay. So, uh, the way we were was, uh, you know, we started uh, looking at, uh, you know, doing a, a, a model checking, uh, uh, you know, looking at symbolic model checking, you know, model checking uh, as uh, manipulation of uh, formulas. And as a first um, uh, instance of the uh, you know, analysis, we are looking at uh, uh, symbolic model checking for checking uh, invariance, invariant uh, properties. Okay, and we noticed that this could be done using what is called traditionally called just reachability analysis, which consists of just accumulating all the reachable states uh, that are reachable from any one of the initial states in um, uh, zero or more, uh, more steps. And uh, you know, we saw that this could be uh, defined as uh, computing the transitive closure of uh, transitive closure of the transition relation. Uh, over the uh, initial uh, state, the smallest transitive closure that includes the state, and which could be done by uh, repeatedly uh, accum uh, uh, accumulating the images starting from initial state. Now, what I observed was that it was useful also to view this as uh, this reachable state, the set of reachable states and its computation as characterizing it as a fixed point of a, uh, a function that is defined over that maps predicates to predicates, that is set of states to set of uh, states and characterizing the set of reachable states, set of all reachable states as a, a fixed point of, a, uh, of, uh, of an appropriately defined such uh, function. For example, here the reachable set could, uh, is uh, uh, the least fixed point, the smallest fixed point of a, a predicate uh, uh, mapping function or predicate transformer, which um, uh, it, you know, takes, um, given an arbitrary set, it takes the image of X under T. That's what this thing is, uh, uh, image of T. Uh, image of this, uh, some set of states under T to which it adds the initial, uh, initial set of uh, states. And I uh, noted that the image uh, of X can be uh, you know, computed as an existential quantification. Uh, over uh, the um, states that satisfy X and uh, also map uh, S to uh, some uh, successor state S prime. Okay, and this one is normally denoted as uh, this fixed point is formally denoted as uh, you know because it's something that is a property of uh, the function tau and Z of uh, tau Z. Now, when defined this way, uh, you know, so you, the one can raise the question, okay, does, uh, what is the guarantee that there'll be fixed points of uh, any such function? That's where uh, the Kleene Tarski theorem uh, comes into, uh, comes in handy, where, which guarantees that tau, as long as the predicate transformer, which maps set of states to set of states is monotonic, any monotonic, uh, predicate you know, finite state transition systems, then the uh, least fixed point is guaranteed to exist and that it will be unique. We'll get to this uh, theorem later on. First, I want to cover the intuitive notion of how to characterize all CTL operators as uh, fixed points, as fixed points of a properly defined tau, so that you can start implementing them uh, using uh, you know, these. And what Lini uh, Tarski uh, theorem also states is when tau is monotonic, uh, then this fix, the least fixed point can be computed as the limit of a chain of uh, tau application starting from false. We start from false, 
to apply tau repeatedly uh, to um, you know false uh, and the result of applying tau to false until uh, you know you reach uh, you know, this kind of union. It's a limit. It's a, it's, it's a union of all these uh, taus, which is what is happening here in the picture. Until you can't add uh, things uh, anymore. So Kleene Tarski theorem. Uh, it states that as long as monotonic, it exists. It's this there is an infinite version of this thing as well. The finite version is the way that I've stated here. The finite version. If, if tau is monotonic, it is guaranteed, I mean, least fixed point is guaranteed to exist and to be unique. And it, this uh, computation of uh, uh, the limit of a tau will terminate for some finite uh, number of, uh, after finite, finite number of iterations. This thing is applicable to infinite uh, state systems also. In case you need an additional property called continuity, and this uh, method of computing tau as a limit of an ascending chain of tau is uh, may no longer terminate. Okay, but that's an aside. Okay, so we will revisit our clean uh, theorem. Okay, later on, and um, uh, you know, so once we, um, as I said, uh, look at uh, characterization of uh, CTL operators as uh, fixed points. Now, I mean, as I told you that one advantage of viewing these things in terms of fixed points is that there is a rich theory and therefore you can prove correctness, but more importantly, and also importantly, then when it is, uh, you know, if it is uh, uh, for any tau using this clean iteration technique, there is a, a common way that you can actually uh, compute the least fixed point. That is shown by this, uh, uh, into a loop uh, in, in here. So you start with false, then you apply uh, tau, I mean, you um, uh, apply tau by accumulating, taking the union of, uh, uh, you know, tau zero, tau one, tau two, et cetera. And that's what uh, is, uh, is happening here. For the specific case of reachability analysis, uh, the tau that, uh, you know, uh, whose fixed point characterizes as an evolved region states is uh, defined as shown as shown here, which consists of uh, adding, uh, computing images for some arbitrary X and then adding uh, to, uh, it to the initial, uh, initial state. So is this clear? Ramalai? Uh, it's a, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I, I want to I want to observe. So there are several fixed points. So the reason that you want to insist on least fixed point is because you want to just accumulate only the reachable states, so nothing more and nothing less, and that's why. So I ask this question: What are some of other possible uh, uh, fixed points? There can be multiple fixed points, and I told you that uh, the set of all the entire universe true, which is represented by the predicate true, is also a fixed point. There are also other fixed points. Can you uh, think of any other fixed point for this uh, function tau as defined here? So it all all yeah, states. yes? Set of all states will be expired. That is true. The set of all states is certainly I already told you. I'm asking you if there is something else, some other fixed point. There are lots of fixed points. Okay, see, for example, if you start, it all depends on what you start with. In this case, you're, you know, you kick-started this, uh, uh, you know, ascending chain starting from false, which is what Klinitarsky theorem states, you know, to get the least fixed point. If you started with some other x, say, if the starting thing is some other x that includes i, It'll still, you know, it, if you start with some X, which is a superset of I, for example, okay? Instead of false in here, you start with some X, your starting uh, set uh, of, the, of the chain is some X, which includes I, but it could be a superset of I, then you will get a fixed point, which still includes I, but something uh, more, okay? 
uh, it also includes things, images of things that are uh, not inside I. Okay, that is also a fixed point that still includes uh, includes I. Okay, the true fixed point is obtained by uh, uh, starting this infinite chain with true. Okay, which includes all the all the states. So, so you see what I'm you see the the point I'm making. So you could use. If, if it, it all depends on what the starting uh, starting uh, set is of this uh, infinite ascending uh, ascending chain. Okay, um, uh, yeah. So uh, you know, then I uh, stated that what is the symbolic formula computed after the i iteration? What it really is happening is if you view this as instead of set of states as uh, uh, predicates uh, being computed, uh, you know, in a series of uh, uh, iterations, this is what is happening. So uh, you start with false, and then you, each time you uh, take the uh, disjunction of uh, image of that, okay? And then you add that to, um, take the image of false, and you add i to it, okay? And uh, image of false is false, and therefore this is equal to i. And then you take uh, that itself, okay? Which is image of i, and then you add uh, to i. That That is i union image of i, then you get i union image of, uh, you know, whatever that was in the previous case. So what you end up, this is equivalent to, after some simplification, is equivalent to i union image, one step image, two step image, uh, and, and, and so on. So in this, uh, you know, uh, 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 what, what the, the code that is shown here actually implements the, uh, 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 what is called cleaning iteration, okay? Uh, of uh, the thing, it, it really uh, you know implements the uh, inf union of. In I mean, the, 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 it's, it's a way of computing starting from false. Okay, the limit of this uh, infinite ascending chain. So what it does is what it returns is for finite state systems. It is the fixed point, which is uh, the union of all these uh, images um, until you reach an n. Uh, uh, which uh, is the uh, uh, point at which you reach the uh, fixed point, okay? And that's what this thing is, uh, you know, computing, okay? Uh, so is that clear? So literally what it is returning as a symbolic, as a formula, is a formula of this, uh, denoted by this, okay? And if we expand image out, what will happen? Image itself is uh, uh, represented by this existential quantification. Therefore, each image I will have I nested existential quantifiers. Okay, and uh, you know, it is a disjunction of uh, a series of uh, increasingly nested existential existentially quantified formula. Okay, and that is still a, a, a propositional formula. Correct, right? and that's what. Uh, this thing, uh, you know, computes. And what this denotes at the end, when you reach the fixed point, is the set of all uh, reachable states. Okay, is that clear? Any questions? Yes, sir, it's clear. And uh, I have one uh, question. I yep. understand how this computes uh, the formula for uh, Bx. It just has to... Uh, while doing the second iteration of computing it out, it has to verify that I, any one of the states uh, satisfy the property. Right? Oh, correct. So, what is your question? Uh, my question is how does this, how can we compute G for that? How, do, how does it? How does, how does it compute a path for like AG? Uh, AG, this is not exactly directly, I mean, see, this one is not computing AG of P, okay? What it is doing is, uh, we, we will see how AG of P, EG of P, et cetera, uh, can be defined, okay? This is, all I'm saying is I chose the reachability, uh, the set of all reachable states. Okay, so, so what this is computing is set of all reachable states starting from a set of initial states, okay? So, in this yeah, in order, to, uh, in order to check all those states satisfy P, of course, one way of doing it is if uh, that, um, you know, you will have to check that, uh, you know, this, this 
formula you know, this implies P, okay? That's what you have to check, okay? That is one way of doing it, okay? So this one is a set of all reachable states. You have to check that every state that is uh, included in this, that is uh, true of this formula that is in, uh, represented by this uh, set is indeed satisfying P. So you have to prove in order to show that AG of P, you know, using reachability analysis, at least you will have to show that this fixed point that you compute implies P. Okay. Okay. So, uh, actually, I was asking about EG, but since we are yeah. we are computing so EG, we can just map that it. You get to. So, so that's what I'm raising here. Okay. So, I mean, that is true for both AG as well as uh, thing. I mean, you can ask that question for AG of AG of P also. I mean, and then for all uh, CTL uh, operators. Okay. And that's what uh, uh, we will do uh, as a next thing. Okay. Okay, so this for image computation for reachable reachable uh, computing set of reachable states from uh, a, a set of initial state you can use this. So let's first, uh, you know, we've already uh, seen this. F denote the set of states satisfying, uh, you know. So uh, E X of F. So let's start with E X of F. I mean, E X of F and A X of F do not require. Uh, really computing fixed points because they're one step uh, uh, relation, right? So EX of F, since we are doing it for all CTL operators, let's start with EX of X, EX of F. So assuming that you already have a characterization for F, then EX of F, that is the set of all states denoted is uh, denoted by this symbolic formula, correct? So this one is not the image, it's actually a pre-image. It is the set of all states that from which in one step, there is a successor which ends up in a state that satisfies F. So this is a pre-image, unlike an image, which was computing the set of all successes mapped from any state in, in, inside Z. What this is doing is given an F, given a set of states that satisfy F, here, here you see the existential quantification is over the post state S prime. Therefore, what is free here is S. So, any S that satisfies this existentially quantified formula is a state such that from that state, there is at least one successor that leads that uh, 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 ends up, a successor that ends up uh, in F that satisfies F, okay? So EX of F can be characterized by this one. Is it clear? But that yes, need not to be a uh, initial state, right? Oh, that may not be initial state. No. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah, you're right, because that's how EX of F semantics is defined, okay? So this may not be an initial state, okay? If you want to check if indeed um, if the initial state is satisfies, then you will have to ensure that you have to show that indeed I is uh, included in that, okay? Yeah, so this, uh, this is how the semantics of CTL formulas are defined anyway, okay? is a set of all states, okay? That, uh, you know, set of all states that satisfy EX of F, yeah? So I'm yeah, starting okay, sir, okay. Yeah, so this is just a starting point, okay? It gets interesting when you get to EG and uh, uh, AG, AF and those kinds of things. Similarly, AX of F can be represented by this formula, okay? It says that it is the set of all states such that every successor from that under T will have to satisfy F, okay? So that's why I call this as an existential pre-image. This is a, a universal uh, pre-image, okay? So, uh, you know, for every, uh, S prime, if T, I mean, for every successor, 
uh, that s of, of s for every s who sucks uh, which has a success s prime that has to be uh, s prime so which can also be denoted as the negation of this existential and this is um, uh, a free okay so the um, you know your question of how do you uh, you know what is the tau what how could you characterize eg and ag for example eg as or ef eu etc as fixed points of uh, appropriate tau will be done in terms of ex and, uh, and ax now so the first thing that we will look at is what's a suitable tau for computing e that can characterize e of f until f2 as a fixed point of okay so we'll start with uh, f uh, u uh, uh, f until uh, f2 okay and we'll look at uh, so so here it comes in handy to uh, recollect uh, your expansion law remember that we had put up an expansion law okay if you look at that it gives you an idea how you could define uh, an appropriate tau uh, whose fixed point can be uh, uh, this uh, you know the set of states uh, uh, satisfying uh, a eu so ef until e of f until f1 until f2 is true and then if it, it is true of any state that satisfies f2 or it has to i mean f1 has to be true now in the current state and in the next state there must be a, a next state from the current state in which 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 itself satisfies e of f1 until f2 okay so this was the expansion law we didn't dwell too much on this see this is actually a, a way of recursively defining what the, the set of states that e f1 until f2 ought to satisfy you see now this gives you an idea of what the um, uh, tau should be for uh, you know representing uh, i mean whose fixed point will represent the set of uh, uh, states that satisfy f1 until f2 to so just replace okay so you define a tau so here is the tau that i'm defining so the z here takes the place of e f1 until f2 so this is a recursive equation okay so tau z is defined as f2 or f1 and ex ex of z so and then the fixed point of uh, this would bill which is what is denoted by uh, uh, you know this notation will accumulate all the uh, all the states so effectively if you were to be using cleany iteration what you would do is you will start with f you will start with f first start with all the states that satisfy f2 and then to that you will add in one step how you you know you would uh, uh, you know you would satisfy you remember that's how we you computed you did the explicit state model checking here we are just doing it over uh, symbolic formulas okay so so let's look at that so this is what i'm claiming is um, the e e eu operator can be characterized defined as the fixed point of this stuff so what exactly is going on to to see to understand that indeed the fixed point indeed um, you know uh, characterizes a set of all states that satisfy this e f1 until f2 let's look at a bit more pictorial okay so what is f2 see in this picture here you can see the picture right permala uh, yes sir yeah so i'm starting with f2 so if you were to okay now what i'm saying is look at what what is cleany iteration uh, you know this is certainly a monotonic operator isn't it because you are adding something okay this one is uh, always uh, <clears throat> uh, 
I mean, yeah. So you're you're adding uh, things. So Z when it is if it is uh, false, EX is false, and F1 will be false. Okay. So so tau one will be F2. Okay. Tau zero is always false. That's what clean integration says. So you start from false, and uh, if you apply tau to false, if you plug in uh, false to Z, EX of false will be, will be false. F1 and false is false, so you're adding F2. So, and that is exactly F2. See, the set of all states, I mean, this set F2 will include lots of things. It is all the states that include uh, F2. But you see, that one is not uh, entirely uh, the set of states that satisfy F1 until, until F2, because it will also have, it certainly includes uh, everything that satisfies F2, and also includes things uh, like this, okay? Like, uh, you, know, uh, you know, things that uh, always satisfy F2 and they can be uh, loops of this kind. But what it does not include are states that don't satisfy F2 of something like this, like, you know, uh, look at the cursor, okay? So this is a state that does not satisfy F2, but satisfies F1. So here is the F1 state in here, okay? Set of all states that satisfy F1. So that in one step leads into something, it satisfies F1, but not F2, but leads to something uh, that is, uh, it has one successor, which, uh, ends up in, uh, you know, uh, one successor in uh, an F2 state. And that's what you need to add, okay? And that's what, and that's how you, uh, you do it. And the reason that this is the fixed point, you can understand it using, see if the clean iteration that when you, when you apply to it is thin, because tau is indeed adding F2 uh, to uh, some Z in each step, therefore it is monotonic, and therefore, and what it is actually doing, the clean iteration, which is, uh, as per uh, clean Itarsky theorem, is uh, you know, is guaranteed to compute the least fixed point, is is this is what is happening. Okay, when you reach the fixed point, you would have accumulated everything. Okay, of these things, but uh, not these kinds of things. See, F one will also have things that um, you know end up never satisfying F two. Okay. Uh, you know, this is something that does not satisfy F2 in here, okay? So uh, if every state, uh, if a state, I mean, every successor state from an F1 state never leads to something F2, those things are not added. You only add those things which has at least one successor, which will eventually lead to F2. And that's exactly what the uh, fixed point of uh, uh, the tau that is defined here uh, will uh, will include and only oh, those. Sir. Yeah. Suppose in our uh, model, if uh, you have to speak. Yeah. 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 Suppose in our model, if uh, F one is released before reaching F two for every path, then yeah, yeah. But then, then this will not include that because. Yeah. Then tau will yeah. contain only the set of states which satisfy F2. That's it, right? Uh, no, no, no. Oh, if there's not, if there's no F1 at all, if in your model, okay, yes, then it'll only be uh, uh, F2, correct? Yes. So then this step, you will reach fixed point very quickly, okay? In one step itself, you will reach fixed point because there's nothing to add beyond F2. So what's happening here is all these um, concentric circles here are all empty, okay? I mean, I, I mean they're not empty. They're all, uh, I mean, yeah, they are empty because they all are states of this kind, like what I've shown, uh, what I've shown here, okay? Uh, here. So this is a state, for example, that, uh, that I've shown here is something that is an F1, but every successor state uh, does not, uh, I mean, is, uh, it never satisfies F2, okay? It's outside F2, okay? 
So, and look at this. Ah, so that's, that's what will happen, okay? So, yeah, maybe you're, the case that you mentioned is an extreme case, okay? Where all these concentric circles are just empty and then this, you only have this, this one. And there's no F1 state which will ever lead to F2. Then you will reach fixed point even quicker, okay? So in each step, this cleaning iteration and the symbolic uh, model checking, what it's doing, it's doing a breadfasting. In one step, it is accumulating all the states, okay? That in one step, uh, you know, go to something which satisfies F2, okay? So although I've shown only one instance that each iteration, cleaning iteration, tau one will include all the states that in one step end up in the fixed point. Okay, that's why this one, unlike the explicit state approach, where you kind of do uh, accumulate one step at a time, this has a more breadth first thing, okay, which I had already shown in the reachability analysis itself. So each step in the cleaning iteration of uh, uh, fixed point computation is accumulating the whole number of a uh, whole bunch of states. Okay. And that's why symbolic model checking in some situations, if there is a lot of connectivity, it also depends on the connectivity, will, will accumulate uh, a lot more states and the uh, number of iterations that you require to reach fixed point in general will be uh, much smaller. Anyway, that's an optimization thing, okay? So uh, for now, I want to make sure that you understand that what exactly this, uh, you know, function, this predicate transformer tau does. And now I'm saying that it indeed is, um, uh, you know, in terms of clean iteration, what is happening is, ex is exactly shown in this uh, picture, okay? So is it clear? Any questions? Hello, sir. Okay. Uh, I have. Sure, tell us. So, in the formula for EX from union, so in the last we have put EX of Z. Correct. So when Z is true, that means. Uh, no, no, no. Well, no, no, no. When Z is true, what happens if you kick start it from true? Is, is that your question? Uh, no, 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 no. When Z eventually gets to true, what it means is that from the current no, 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 no. Of Eventually Z never gets, you know, that is not what's happening, okay? What's happening is you're starting with Z is equal to false, okay? So tau one is tau of false, which is F2. Hey, it's one thing, okay? I mean, without actually, yeah. So I, I'm illustrating the fixed point, assuming that you believe, you trust me that Clannis fixed point theorem is true. What's happening is the least fixed point can be computed as a limit of a, a, a series of tau chains, okay? So what are the tau chains? I mean, you could you can work it out. I showed you for image, okay? So what's happening here is, so tau one is F2. Tau two is all this first concentric circle here, union F2. Yeah, okay, okay. Yes, sir. Tau two is, tau two is union of the second concentric circle, first concentric circle and uh, the third and so on, okay? Yeah, okay, sir. okay. Yeah, so, so eventually when tau i plus one of false becomes equal to tau i of false, that's how you should be asking the question. Not when z is equal to true, okay? When tau i plus one of z is equal to tau i of z, false, okay, because you're starting with false. So when tau i plus one of, uh, when you reach an i such that tau i plus one of false is equal to tau i of false, that's when you will end up accumulating all the states that satisfy E of F1 and two. Okay? And that is the fixed point of tau, the least fixed point of tau. Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah. 
So if you plug in true here, what will happen? <laughs> I mean, what you will end up getting will be, uh, I mean, some other fixed point, but that is not the least fixed point, okay? So what will happen? This itself will be true. And this will be F1, F2. So, you know, I, I, you know if you do from true, you will not get a fixed point, okay? So you will have to start from false, okay? So to compute least fixed point as a limit of an ascending chain, Cleaney's theorem says that you have to start from false and that's what is happening, yeah? Yeah, okay. So similarly, for, uh, uh, you know, characterizing A, U as a, uh, and a fixed point, the tau that you need is very similar to this except that at each step, you will have to include, you have to do an AX, you will have to, in, you have to add the, the, that state to F2 only if, only those states who, whose every successor leads to something which is in an F2 state, okay? So you cannot have states like this here, I included, I added it to F2, any F1 state, even if it had one successor. Whereas here, you will have to use AX, the A pre-image, okay, to, to add in each, uh, in each step. Then you will uh, get uh, AF, okay? So you can't be including these states. It is more stringent. You will have to include only those states. If every successor of that goes into then you get, uh, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, one way of ensuring is you will have to draw up this uh, cleany chain, starting from false, what, what happens, and then that's how you have to visualize, and that's what I've done, okay? Now, you know, it's, it, look, it seems like there is some magic going on here because of the way the thing is. Therefore, one, you can ask the question, how do you actually prove that the least fixed point is it, it includes exactly those states that um, you know satisfy a U. Okay. Now we will we will see proofs of this. Okay, I'm giving you an intuitive feeling by uh, picturizing the Cleaney uh, chain. Okay, in order to do this, this has to be done by induction on the number of steps and the number of steps that you need to get to the uh, clean iteration as well as the number of um, uh, the length of the uh, uh, the parts uh, uh, from any state that uh, you need to uh, consider uh, uh, you know uh, 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 to show a, um, a, a that it satisfies a u okay in order to show that this set of states um, as per the formal semantics of AU that we have defined, CTL semantics, is exactly equal to the set of states that are included in the fixed point, which is computed as a clean chain. You know, it has to be done by induction, and we will see a proof later on. Okay. But my goal is for you to get an intuition, you know, based on. Uh, uh, a simulation of the, uh, the Cleany chain, okay? So now, sometimes the fixed points can also be uh, uh, calculated, can, if it's convenient, they can always be also be calculated as uh, limits of descending tau chains. If tau is monotonic, you start from true and then you can identify a uh, you know, define a tau such that every time you apply a tau, you are, um, you know, reducing the cardinality of the set, okay? So in the fixed point that you reach, the greatest fixed point uh, of that descending chain can also be uh, 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 another way of computing. And it is sometimes convenient, especially when you have EG, AG kind of things. It is, you, it is convenient to visualize them as limits of um, the greatest fixed points of descending, uh, you know, tau chains, okay? So in this, 
the cleaning iteration works as follows. You start from true, that is the set, you start from the, the entire universe of states, and your tau will be defined such that every time you apply, some set subset of states will be removed from, will be taken out of uh, this Q. And then, and that's why I call this as every time you apply tau, you will, it is a descending chain, you know, because the set that you get, the set of states that you get is, gets smaller and smaller as you travel down. Yeah, the distinct chain. And eventually, when it reaches a fixed point, it will be the greatest fixed point of such a tau, okay, which will be a least fixed point of some other tau, but it is sometimes convenient to uh, represent um, your, um, uh, I mean, analysis, the CTL operator as a uh, uh, limit of a descending chain. And while EG of F can indeed, yeah, GFP here stands for greatest fixed point, not a LTL formula. Okay. So strictly speaking, once you have AU, you have EF and AF. So E EG and AG can be also expressed as negation of these things, okay, you can, but it is sometimes uh, useful to uh, visualize them as this uh, point because, uh, you know, as you move forward, you will see, you will get, and that's what I'm going to describe now. So we will be defining EG of F as the greatest fixed point of a descending chain of suitably defined tau, that is the greatest uh, fixed point. Once again, to see what tau, whose greatest fixed point will be exactly the, those states that satisfy EGF to understand that, we will have to recall the expansion law of EG of F. What is EG of F? It is those states that satisfy S and every state that in that satisfy that F also it's next in the next state, uh, you will have to have, um, uh, it, 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 there must be at least one successor state, which also, uh, you know, satisfies, uh, uh, EG of F, okay? That is how the expansion law, the set of all states uh, is, uh, that satisfies EG of F is recursively uh, uh, defined, okay? Inductively, you can say inductively defined. So, so the, uh, my claim is then if we define tau Z to be this one, F and EX of Z for any predicate or set, subset of states Z, then the fixed point, the greatest fixed point of such a tau is uh, the set is exactly the set of all states that uh, satisfy EG of F. See, this tau is expressed now as F and see, it's, a, it's taking away because it is constraining more and more, okay? Given the set of states that satisfy E, X, or Z, it is adding an additional constraint to F. So every time you apply, uh, starting from true, start, I mean, every, every time you apply tau, you're getting smaller and smaller states because you're in each step, you're taking a conjunction of uh, whatever that you get from the previous step. Uh, and you're adding more, uh, more constraints, okay? And that's why, like this procedure says that, um, you know, cleaning, cleaning iteration says, oh, you can compute the fixed points, fixed point of this by starting from true and then uh, for Z and then repeatedly uh, applying tau to, uh, to that. So let's see what happens when you uh, um, simulate this on a, um, in a cleany chain starting from 
uh, true. See, when you plug true to Z, uh, Z what, what happens? What does this reduce to? Suppose what is tau of true? Tau of a zero, tau to the power zero is true. What is tau of true? What is EX of true, Paramalai? Uh, tau of tau. For this formula, we will get the set of all states which satisfies F. Correct. And, and the states which are next to F. No, no, no. I asked you a very specific question. When I plug in true to Z, what is F and EX of true? It's a set of space that satisfies your file. Ah, that's exactly what I've shown here. Yeah? Okay. So in one step, tau one of true is F, which is what I've shown here. Okay? And note that that state, of course, it, every state in that satisfies F. It will, it will have uh, two kinds of states. Okay? So these kinds of things where the strongly you remember how we did uh, in the explicit mod, uh, model checking explicit state model checking you started with to, uh, what was the idea for computing eg of f you started with uh, the strongly connected component every state of which satisfied f okay yeah yeah so so this f the set of all states uh, F includes those that are already in the fixed point, but those that should not be in, in you know, uh, it will also have some states. Okay, see, for example, for these kinds of things that are either as part of a strongly connected component or that lead to uh, a state in a strongly connected component, every state EX will end up satisfying F. Okay, but the this set the set of all F states can also include, uh, it, you know, the, it's an F state, but it leads in one or more step to something which uh, uh, may not satisfy F, okay, of this kind, okay? So here, this is a state whose every successor, I mean, it has only one successor as shown here, will end up not leading to something which, which does not satisfy uh, you know, which, uh, you know, which does not satisfy, which at least one of which does not satisfy F. These are the kinds of states that you will have to remove from F. You only need to retain, retain these kinds of things. Now, if you're able to investigate, you know, uh, investigate the entire uh, graph and then pick your strongly connected components, you could have started from this. But, um, you know, here, uh, when you're doing it as a chain of uh, descending chain, what you really have to visualize as, as each step, you will be removing something which violates, which currently is in your um, i-th step of your uh, Clini chain, but it is, has to be removed, okay? And these things are those states whose violation can be shown in, uh, you know, one step, two step, three step, and so on. So this is a state in which in one step, it leads to something which uh, leads to uh, not of it and, uh, and so on. Okay. Yes. Sir. yes. Uh, so in that formula, what if we substitute Z with the true, what will EX true will give us? EX of true is true. So, uh, EX of true, uh... Every state, true includes every state, okay? So you're saying, what are the states that in one step will satisfy true? Any state, every state, uh, every state satisfies true, huh? Oh. Uh, okay, 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 I get it, yeah. Yeah, so you're asking the question, yes, okay. True is, is every, any state satisfies true. So you ask the question, so what are the uh, set of states 
who's uh, who's at least one successor state satisfies true. I mean, any any state satisfies uh, true. So you can start from any state, and its uh, successor state is bound to satisfy true. Yeah. You got it. Uh, okay. So the claim is E G of f can be denoted as the greatest fixed point. It's you the the notation that's used is new, okay, not new, new of this thing, okay, and that is computed as uh, using a descending clean uni. I mean, a a a, a, a conjunction of descending uh, cleany chain. When I say cleany chain, what I mean is tau true starting with true. That is tau zero. Uh, you know, true is tau zero, and tau one is tau of true. Tau two is tau of tau of true, and uh, and and so on. So tau one of uh, true is what I've shown here, and I'm and I'm also shown that has some things that uh, have to, must be included in the um, uh, fixed point, but it also has things that should be removed from uh, the fixed points which do not satisfy E.G. of uh, F. and that's what uh, happens uh, happens here. Okay, so here is the big circle. Here is F. Okay, that is tau one. So true is this entire box. Okay, square box. So after one step, you get F. Okay, F is all the states that are included in this big circle here, and everything outside of that is not of F. So first, when you apply tau two, tau two of x will, will remove things of this kind that I've shown here in this slice, in the leftmost slice, okay? Which is a state, so you look at this state. Every successor is something that uh, does not, will lead to something which is uh, the, uh, the, uh, does not satisfy an artifact. That is EX. This is an F state, yes, but it is every, but it is about EX. It does not, it's not true of EX of um, uh, F, okay? Because every successor, this particular state violates EX of uh, F, okay? because every successor is some, is a, a not F, not F state. So, after tau two will be that um, uh, subset of F after having removed the leftmost lights. Then when you apply it, tau uh, three will then remove those states which in two steps, okay, lead to uh, something which violate and so on and so on, okay? Until you have removed everything and you would only be left with things that, uh, I mean, those F states that have at least one path leading to something and where, where every state is an F state and it ends up in something uh, whose, uh, you know, which is a strongly connected component. A strongly connected component is characterized by something where every state on that um, uh, uh, cycle that is included in the strongly connected component satisfies ex of uh, of f, okay, and that's what you know that's what is happening. I mean, actually, this whole thing satisfies. So the, these states can have one successor that is leading out. That's okay because that's what uh, you know. That's why we're using ex, okay, since we're using ex, okay, and that's okay because as long as there is at least one successor that leads to something inside the fixed point. So the clean iteration is exactly doing this, okay? Starting from true, and then a repeated application is on that. Is this, is this clear? Any questions? No, sir. So now you could see all the rest of the formula, A, G, I mean, you can either express them as least fixed points of a suitably defined tau uh, or a greatest fixed point of a suitably defined, uh, I mean, the descending chain of a suitably defined tau. 
the greatest fixed point, the formula usually will, will have to be defined as every time you apply it, your, uh, uh, you know, make getting a smaller, a smaller set. So it is still such a tau is also monotonic, okay? And that plus the fact that you only have finite number of states will guarantee that in some finite number of uh, cleaning iteration uh, steps, you will reach your fixed point, which exactly corresponds to the uh, states denoted by um, uh, the application of the CTL operator to uh, sub point. Okay. Now, so with this, you are ready to uh, uh, implement a CTL model checker. Okay. Because all you have to do as an exercise, this is actually given in the book also, a good exercise is for you to uh, define uh, a tau for AG, R. Okay, I certainly recommend that you define for R what that tau should be. I think it is given in the book, but uh, you know, uh, simulate and convince yourself. Draw a picture of this kind, okay? Uh, to convince, con convince yourself that AR how it could be defined as a greatest uh, fixed point of a descending, uh, descending chain. So that will help you uh, make it very clear, uh, you know, that it will ensure that you will understand this, okay? I will include that in the written part of your uh, assignment uh, soon. So now, assuming that all of them can be I mean, implemented as a town and uh, all the, the, the towns will only use EX and AX, okay? So each CTL operator that requires a true fixed point, um, you know, uh, will it itself will be uh, can be implemented in terms of uh, using EX and AX. As you saw, EX and AX can be implemented using existential quantifier. So an implementation, and you saw, uh, you know, in um, the BDD lecture how you could do existential quantification elimination over a formula. A propositional formula that is represented as a as a BDD. Okay, so at the um, bottommost level, you given a P formula. This is how the structure of your implementation of your CTL model checker, a symbolic uh, model checker and implementation, would be structured. Okay, at the bottommost level, you will have a function which uh, just does implements EX and, and you can do AX also if you wish, okay? A EX and AX, okay? That itself, see all this will be a program which will be, you know, parameterized with respect to a transition relation, but it'll take a, some arbitrary formula representing a set of states and return a, return a, uh, a propositional formula. So this itself can be implemented in terms of given a set of variables, you will have to existentially quantify those variables out, okay? So you will start with gen exists, I mean, generate an existentially quantified formula, which uh, is available as part of your library, BD library. Then you will implement EX and AX also as, uh, then you will have one implementation, one implementation for each of the CTL operators, which will be implemented using either EX or AX, as the case may be. And it will implement the fixed point cleaning iteration loop, okay? Given the set of formulas denoted by the sub formula inside a CTL formula who's rooted at it the CTL operator, okay? So all this is a program that maps a, a C, I mean, a, a propositional formula denoting a set of states to the result of applying EG to that point. At the topmost level, your, this will be a, a, you know, you can implement them as a recursive function or a, a you know, a loop, okay? Um, at the topmost level, your model checker will take a CTL formula, which is a 
hierarchy of which contains a hierarchy of CTL of operators, okay? And then given a CTL formula, it generates a, a propositional formula. Of course, I should I should have I should have included um, um, you know some uh, p formula also because at the leaf the leaf of these for, uh, will have CTL formulas. They will be represent. I mean, the the atomic CTL formula will be propositional formula. Therefore, either you can say that that is included as part of it, or they are. I mean, I'm assuming here that it is embedded inside that. Okay, and this produces a, a Boolean result. Okay, and this generates a P formula, propositional formula, corresponding to any CTL formula, which is passed as an argument, and then generates, I mean, the P formula will use these uh, EG, uh, EU, gen EG, gen EU, et cetera, to construct the uh, propositional formula that represents, it characterizes a set of all states that satisfies the CTL formula. Then uh, you will check if the initial predicate that is included in the Kripke model implies that F, if that is valid. In that case, you will return true, otherwise you will return false. Okay? This is how you will be implementing the, uh, the okay. Okay. Um, okay. Um, yeah, any questions? No, sir. Okay, now maybe I have, how many slides I have? Just one, one more slide. This is, um, I, will, I will go through the slide, but I will go through it again, okay? Because I know that you are at the end of the thing. And then, I mean, so far what I have shown you are just fixed point characterization of each CTL operator, okay? Now, the question that I'm asking is how, I mean, can you characterize this? Can you characterize the CTL, I mean, the model checking of CTL model checking under fairness, okay? As also as uh, fixed points, okay? That is, in other words, can I define a tau? Okay, this is what I'm asking. Can me model checking under fairness, that is, can I implement E G of F, E F of G, that is E G under a given fairness condition. As you know, E F of G of, for, for any formula F is not express, expressible as a CTL formula, but now you have a very powerful operator. I mean, which is uh, uh, the fixed point operator. So the question that I'm asking is, which is more powerful than the CTL operator? Yes, every CTL operator, we saw how it could be uh, implemented or characterized in terms of the fixed point operator. So, you know, so can EF, the set of all states, satisfying EF of, you know, G of F, for example, be characterized using a fixed point? So the thing is that the answer is yes, you indeed can. Okay? And the tau formula that you need to construct is a little bit uh, uh, you know, clever and it is uh, somewhat tricky. Okay? So I'm going to illustrate that um, uh, here. I will do it quickly. Okay? And what is the time? Okay, so I have till 105, right? So, yeah. so I will do it quickly and I, yeah. I will go through this again. I want to finish it off so that this will be recorded and you can go through it and I will uh, re-explain this since uh, the others are missing as well. Now consider a fair, I mean, as an illustration, consider a fair Kripke model with the fairness constraint F defined as uh, two, with, in terms of two predicates, okay? P1 and P2. So which means that you have to restrict your model checking to all those paths 
infinite paths in which the states that satisfy in which P1 and P2 occur, each of them uh, occur infinitely often. Okay, you remember that, correct, uh, Paramalai? Yes, sir. Okay. Now the question that I'm raising is, using say existing CTL operators, for which we have defined, uh, you know, we know how to implement and using a fixed point uh, operator, suppose it is at our disposal, can I define, uh, can I characterize uh, this, okay, as uh, a fixed point of a, uh, a tau. So we'll start with, consider this formula. Okay, this one. What does this formula denote? So just look at the top portion. So here is a picture of the set of states that satisfy this CTL formula. See, by the way, how did you, Paramalai, uh, how was this uh, model checking under fairness implemented in explicit state? Do you remember? I don't remember that. So. Yeah. But we saw that in, in last class, we saw that. That's that correct. So I remember. So I will, I will refresh your memory. So you started with a strong, a fair, strongly connected component, e.g. in explicit state model checking, much like in the symbolic model checking that we just now saw where it computed, you started, for, you know, e.g. of f, you eliminated, uh, you removed all the states which had not of f as labels. You only kept f, okay? That's what, you know, the greatest fixed point clean iteration did just now as well. Okay, now from that, but in that you retained, once you removed all those things, I mean, normally you would have kept all kinds of uh, strongly connected component inside that, uh, inside your graph, but you restricted yourself to those strongly connected components that were fair. That is those strongly connected components on which P1 and P2, each of them held infinitely often, okay? So, so this is not exactly what the thing is. See what F and what F and this formula, EX of EF until P1, just look at the uh, picture above. What it does is, of course, uh, you know, that every state of that satisfies F. And, and every state of that is such that in the next state, the next state satisfies EF until P1, as well as EF until P2. So for example, this one is an F state. This circle here includes only F states. So, so this satisfies F, this, the, initial, the starting state of this path. And then it also satisfies EX of F until P1 as well as F until P2 because F is satisfied here and in the next state, P1 and P2 satisfies and there is a loop, okay? That's a strongly connected component in which, uh, you know, P1 and P, both, you know, P1 and P2 satisfy. Similarly, it is, uh, is, is the case here. Of course, it will have all those, these kinds of things, but it'll also have things like this, okay? So this state, that is only strongly, see this, this strongly connected component in here is a, uh, in a fair strongly connected component. But this one is not a fair strongly connected component. Why? Because it has, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. This one is as well, okay? I should not have had uh, this back, back loop. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, both these show strongly connected. So, so for example, if you did not have this thing, oh, oh sh uh, I mean, show here. So here, here, here's what it is. So this one state here 
is something in which uh, you know P1 holds, but it is not it is part of a not a strongly connected uh, you know fair strongly connected network. So you need to remove those kinds of things. Okay, this already includes fair fair strongly connected states which are on fairly F states, which are on fairly strongly connected components, one in which uh, both, e, uh, you know, both P1 and P2 happen infinitely often. But unfortunately, it also includes those uh, F states, which in one or more steps lead to something, some uh, strongly connected component, which is not fair. Okay? And that is what you need to get rid of. Okay? So, so, starting with this okay so you could this kind of e that you had in here you can use that as a starting point okay and uh, you know to get uh, your uh, uh, you know the tau uh, to do it so the tau z is the tau should be such that every state in that given as z should be an f state And every state on that is such that in the next state, f until um, in the z until you know p1 uh, holds good. Okay, and if you see that if you and the fixed point of this would be uh, would be such that it will uh, would have removed all the states that satisfy um, uh, you know that violate these uh, states that are leading to unfair strongly connected components and keeps only those which uh, lead to uh, uh, some uh, uh, fair strongly connected components. Therefore, EF of G of F can be defined as a, um, uh, uh, the greatest fixed point of a, a tau, where tau itself is expressed in this, uh, in, in, in this fashion as a conjunction of these two things. So in general, if you had n, if your fairness constraint had n p uh, fairness predicates, your uh, EFGF can be expressed as a greatest fixed point of a tau, which is defined like this here, okay, as shown as shown here. You'll have one ex eu for every um, uh, for every um, fairness uh, constraints, okay? Uh, corresponding to every fairness constraint. And, uh, uh, you know, so that uh, when you do clean iteration on that, you will see you will, in each step, remove uh, uh, those states in, in, uh, in tau two, you will remove those states which lead to a, a, a unfair strongly connected component in one step, and then tau three will remove uh, those states which will lead to uh, unfair strongly connected component two steps and so on and so on and so forth so that eventually we'll only keep those uh, you know those things that uh, lead to uh, you know uh, are fair uh, strongly connected components okay so you know we will look at that and i think you need to uh, think about this review and then you know we will uh, i will go through this again um, in, in the next class okay so uh, yeah, so I'm not sure if uh, you were able to grasp this aspect completely, Paramalai. But uh, if you do have any questions, please let me know. But I will go through this again in the, in, uh, the next class as well for the benefit of the other two people. Uh, but do you have any questions? No, sir. I'll also this in the okay. okay, fine. Thank you. Okay. Then I will. Uh, stop share. I will end the live stream. I will